Lorraine back with lesson six of my A to Z of watercolour painting. So lesson five, we did this little landscape. Now remember I put on this uh, burnt sienna wash in the foreground, a watery wash uh, to warm the foreground. Now I did let that dry before I started with my trees. And the green that I mixed for my trees was significantly thicker, like e.g. less water in the paint for the trees. So with your washes, they're very watery. Uh, when you want to try and do darks, they're much thicker. Okay. So this week I'm going to start by showing you a different kind of wash. I started here with a flat graded wash. And this week, or this lesson, I'm going to do a varied wash, but on wet paper. So you just float the paint on the top of the paper. You start off with clean water and so this is a nice big Teflon brush and we want that bead of water at the bottom all the way down wet paper. Uh, this is a good way to just control the wetness of the paper whereas if you spray it on or just dump a whole lot of water in the middle of the paper you'll get inconsistent wetting. Uh, the dry areas the paint won't flow on and where it's too wet the paint will pool. So I've just come right down to the bottom. So the paper's really shiny. Don't know if you can see it there. Real shine on the paper. But when you look sideways at the paper there's no big pools of water. Sometimes your paper will buckle when you do this. Uh, even though it's 300 GSM paper it might buckle. So in order to get around that, you would just get a spray bottle and spray the back with a mist of water. And uh, then you'll have wet both sides and that'll overcome the buckling problem. So now I'm going to lay my board completely flat. And I need um, a wash of cobalt blue. Now these colours have to be really clean. Um, I don't always keep my palette clean, but when I'm doing washes, the colours have to be clean. So if you have to resort to getting fresh colour out of the tube, do that. Now also remember that the paper is wet, so the water will be just or the paint will be dispersed on the paper. So it needs to be, and that's not really clean, so I need to put out a bit of clean permanent rose. Probably a little bit more than I need there that I put out, so I'll just put a smidge back in my palette. Beautiful singing colour. That's that Dale Rowney permanent rose. Give my brush a good wash because you don't want to get your colours mixed up, otherwise the colours will go dirty on your paper. Now I've got raw sienna, raw sienna, cobalt blue, permanent rose. Clean brush. I'm going to start with my cobalt blue, just in the corners. Now there's no hard and fast rule about where you put your colours, but I like to start in the corners. And then I'm not going to overlap colour, but just put it side by side on the paper. Because I don't want the colours to mix too much. So I've got a bit of permanent rose here. And that's it. Just lift off that little bead of water at the top because if you've got a, a really strong bead of water at the edge of your painting, what will happen, this will all dry and then that will run back in and create a cauliflower. So that looks a bit hodgepodge at the moment, but once again I could get my trusty Taclon, big Taclon brush, try and have it dry. To tell you the truth, I often have an apron on or old clothes and I wipe my brush on my clothes. But for the sake of filming, I have to look a bit glam, don't I? So just very, very softly, so you're barely touching the paper, you can blend these washes together. Sometimes when you put them on, they're just perfect. 
from first glance they're just perfect but other times you just want to manipulate them a tiny bit I'm just drying my brush all the time softening it off because I don't want to spread my cobalt into my raw sienna or my permanent rose so by cleaning my brush and drying it off all the time I'm trying to prevent that So sometimes you do it and nothing goes wrong goes wrong with it but um, because I've got the camera on me I'm doing a bit of touch up today but there are always ways to overcome problems people think oh you make a mistake in watercolor and you have to throw the whole thing away but that's not the case at all <coughs> during the course of these lessons I will show you how to overcome a lot of commonly found problems so, and there we have it, a varied wash. So this sort of varied wash is really great for under a landscape. The initial washes will shine through even at your end result. And that's the way I've built up a painting like this one behind me, by putting on these sort of fluid, loose washes to start with and then cutting in the darks afterwards. So it's a very handy little wash to know how to do. Uh, so come back and see me on www.sidewalk-gallery.com.au and see you next time.